Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. It's Professor Mark Leone here, and today we're going to spend a quick 15 minutes with the one of the most dominant artists in all of Western art, and that's Michelangelo, Michelangelo Bonarotti. So he was born in 1475 and died in 1564, so he had a good long career. And we're going to look today really quickly at most of the drawings and sketches. Most of these are preparatory drawings for... Uh, uh, murals especially, some sculptures too as well, and also of course for the Sistine Chapel. So uh, we have these earlier drawings here. Um, you know Michelangelo, if you take a look at his work, uh, especially the preparatory work, you see a lot of ink work, so a lot of hatching, you know cross hatching type work, and that's what we see here. The control of anatomy is unparalleled. Um, the uh, use of tone with the drawing. There looks like there looks to be some wash you can see uh, in certain areas of the figure, but primarily, and probably the, the drawing is aged and in, 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 uh, splotched a little bit, but, but primarily it's just a great study of use of pen and ink technique as we've seen before in Rembrandt and, uh, and, and others, and certainly Goya and etchings as well, but these are all ink pen or some type of ink in, in Croquil uh, a pen. And uh, just unparalleled use of anatomy, uh, texture within the drawing to get the rhythm and flow of these movements of the arm, but also the cross hatching on the outside. So just a great beginning way to open up to the world of Michelangelo and his drawings. All right, let's go on. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, here we see one of the more world famous uh, Michelangelo drawings. I think the first time I saw this was in. Uh, L.A. County Museum of Art. It might it might be in their collection. I'd have to look it up. It's not that important. But I remember uh, I was a student, and there was a younger student drawing, doing a pretty good job drawing from this drawing in his little sketchbook. Um, so it kind of uh, put an indelible mark, and in, certainly in my mind. And uh, this is from his studies for the Battle of Cassina, or Cassina, I suppose. And again, the um, use of uh, his understanding and study of anatomy, both in the back, the, the muscles of the trapezius here, and the neck, right, coming down, uh, just lovely in through here and coming across and, and over as the trapezius is wont to do, kind of, a, kind of an arrowhead shape in through there, right. The use of tone, value, and of course the material now here is chalk. So he's working in chalk pencil. And let's see if I can get a little bit closer into this study here so we can get a little bit up front there. And we just see a, what is a lovely um, rendering of value, form, muscular form, really flexed back as the left shoulder pulls back towards us a little bit. But also don't forget Michelangelo's use of lovely contour line, uh, especially here, of course, and in the arm, beautiful control of the the um, digits, the bones of the, the fingers there, the egg-like forms of the form and through here, and then these wonderful core shadows all in through here, just well controlled in through here and over, and these nice divot pockets just to show us the scapula, you know, coming down in that beautiful kind of triangular shape that it does, but the rhomboid Muscles on top, Terry's major and minor, pulling over and through here with the lats. So really, just a beautiful job overall. And if you want to study anatomy further, and of course I, I, most of you know I have an anatomy section now, um, a great place to do copies would be, uh, that's where I would go again, is to Michelangelo. So let's move on to our next one. Here we have another study from the Battle of uh, Casino. And uh, again, another famous uh, uh, anatomy study, figure pose study, uh, lovely gesture. Look at the flow of this from here to here, right, and out. Just an elegant pose. So if you're also a figure model, some of our artists at NKU go on to do some figure modeling too, and I tell them to study, study art history and modeling in, in the uh, figures that we see for posing can be a wonderful support mechanism for you. And this is a great, great job. The extension of the arm here over to the foreshortening of the arm and the hand in through there is quite lovely. Uh, again, the use of ink and contouring. This is one to really study. 
the the lovely flow and contouring of the calf. Let's go in a little deeper and take a look at that very, very quickly here. Let's take a look and then move this up a bit so we can see that. Not only does he use uh, brown sort of sepia tone chalk, but also a little white chalk we see there as well. So sepia tone ink, I mean, and also a little white chalk to heighten that on what is a kind of a very kind of beige paper in through here. The lovely control of Contour line, notice the contour line is varied in movement, but also in value, a little darker here. Really darkened through the oblique areas it comes across and down across the figure of Michelangelo. And then some really dark spots where he's sitting down where we can really feel him touching the surface in this beautiful rendering of the condyles of both the femur and the tibia and fibia out in through this area than they really are. Are, you know, bar none. It doesn't get really any better than Michelangelo, and we just get different styles, really, at that point in time. And then he probably looks like either some damage to the drawing here, or we get uh, a little bit of chalk that he used in the upper torso region in through here, right? We see that little smudging. That could be chalk. He might have used chalk on top, or it could just be damage. We don't I don't really know because I haven't looked into that part of it. It's not that important really as well. But what we want to get out of this is great use of anatomy scale proportion and exquisite use of uh, ink, pen, and drawing. It's really controlled. When I draw with ink, I'm a little bit more wilder with more, more a little bit more probably uh, extravagant with my exp expressive mark making, which I like. So, But uh, certainly we all look to Michelangelo for those first techniques. And we're starting to move on to uh, another study uh, of the Battle of Cecina and a really strong anatomical study. So you can see him using just a pen nib, a crow quill pen, out in through here in some very quick sketching. This you can relate to some of the other drawings that look a little bit more polished where he would start out as in really using his understanding of anatomy, egg forms, right to get the forms without the construction lines and just starting in on areas like the sartorius, the uh, vastus medialis or vastus intermedialis and through here the abductors, rectus femoris right here on top. So if you're really starting to get you know at the point where you're studying anatomy, the gastrocnemius, the soleus in through here um, and then the, uh, the tibia in through there, medial malleolus of the of the foot in through here you get just a wonderful understanding of how he conceived of forms and then you get a little bit more over here his rendering further so you can see where he starts out over here and then finishes up kind of a middle range of value um, and maybe a little bit of brush using in some of these darker thicker areas where he gets more pockets of cast and core shadows the form turns this way over look at all the muscle forms turning through there so it's right there for you you can use my videos and then use studies from Michelangelo he's not around to teach anatomy anymore I am and then you can go if you want and, and, and draw from figures or even better draw from um, art historical references and here we have a graphic page of anatomical studies of the form the extensors here on top and the flexors on the bottom here, my pen's delayed a little bit today, a um, little bit being unruly, and we see a little bit of those muscle forms as they torque and twist over and around the figure a little bit. But I wanted to show you Michelangelo's primary goal for his sketchbooks or preparatory drawings was to prepare for paintings or murals and or sculptures. Look at the beautiful contour line changes. You've got some ink. We've also got some chalk together utilizing all of the paper uh, this paper was more expensive, certainly. Uh, but just the beautiful control of these forms, the rendering of the forms, it doesn't really get much better than that. I love the digits in through here, that bulging of the condyles, thinking in a block-like form to the fingers, and then the extended nail through that is, is, um, is quite lovely. So a little combination of both chalk and also ink. Here we have another study of the torso. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Looks like we've got chalk here for our study. Let's get in deep in there and see that wonderful technique, how he uses 
an incisive uh, contour line with the chalk tip, keeping those chalk tips very, very sharp, but then also using the side of the uh, charcoal stylus tool. What they generally drew with was a metal kind of stylus that looked a lot like, kind of like this crudely, right? And then they had a little holder here and they put in chalk material. Charcoal wasn't around yet through here and something like that. The holder was probably even longer. And then they had this material and then they could have, actually I've seen it at the Louvre where they had a double. They had one on both ends. They had maybe a darker here and a lighter one here, but then they could sharpen this to a very fine point, keep one blunt or keep it sharp. And, and they could use this broad surface for very broad strokes in through here and then the tip of course for the incisive kind of lines in through there, the contour lines, the variation. So just remember that you're defining not only, see how this form is an egg form in through here, you're defining its outer boundaries with variations in line, right? But also these inner stroke mark makings here and then these tonal areas, right? In through here with a, a much more broader stroke so they blend they blend together quite quite nicely in through there. Lovely study of the um, the rectus abdominis in through here and all the little variations you'll you'll get in these extra little movements. You don't really get on on most models, so these had to be very very um, fit models and or he would also invent a little bit of subform with also the uh, uh, rib cage coming through and then also a little bit of the serratus interior muscles that would come down roughly right in through in here and come back starting up about I think number from number one rib in between to about the ninth rib and they kind of go at an angle back towards him and then you can see his gesture look at that see how loose and fresh that gesture is and then you can tighten it up later on so there's a lot to learn from this little section quite a bit so here we have a sibyl or, uh, yeah, I think it's a Sybil, not an ignudi from the Sistine Chapel study, a study of a older woman. And this could have been a man um, seeing some of the features of the brow, but he, he definitely changed the gender to female. Michelangelo would do that quite often. If you have seen images, if you've been to the Sistine Chapel, if you've seen images at the Sistine Chapel, uh, the male, the females are awfully large and big. I like to tell my students are like professional American football player linebackers um, with breast forms and female breast forms, so they're awfully large and thick. Here we have a use of chalk, but in, in less to tonal display, but more con in contouring and cross-contouring with line. We get a little tone in the pockets of the cavity between the eyeball here, the round, you know, eyeball here, right? Whoops. And then the, um, let me take that out a little bit. Yeah, the roundness of the eyeball there over here, right? And then the space in between. We get a little tone in through here, but mostly a line. A line study with some linear delineations, and we get a little bit of the zygomatic arch coming in through here, the maxilla in through, in through here. Um, just a lovely, um, again, I'm obviously masterful rendering of the model. What looks like also maybe a little bit of white chalk in some of these lighter, lighter areas. Here we have probably the most famous Michelangelo study of all from Sisti, the Sistine Chapel. And um, I don't know of an, another drawing that I can think of in art history that conjures so much emotion and beauty as this one. This drawing has probably been studied more than any other drawing in the history of, of Western art. Um, and it's probably his most famous drawing. And of course, the Sistine Chapel would be his most famous cumulative work. And so we get multiple studies of the pose. We get hand study, hand study here, hand study. We have a gesture here, and we have a hand study here. We have a face study that's you know less refined, and of course we get around the entire form a more thorough understanding of Michelangelo's more technique of the uh, incisive line and the broadening of the tone. If you ask which came first would be the broad tone and then the incisive line. It could be done in multiple stages. I know Pierre Paul Proudhon worked in, in longer various stages of giving tone and then line and then tone and line. He would he'd blend out and put back in line and so we get some of this line through here. But 
uh, we know we have the light source coming from the left here, top left, and everything is illuminated. So the core shadows here, right, all these darker areas of core shadow are generally to the right of the model. And then, of course, the real big tone break right in through here of the model is right there. So all of this is more in shadow. The splitting of the back, the, the erector spinae muscles, the ilio iliocostalis, the longissimus, and of course the spinalis in, in tight in through here. And we get spinous processes of the back part of the spine right in through here. The glute in through here. I mean, it's just a major beautiful study. And what my favorite part is right in through here, this so muscular form, the deltoid, as it begins to split over in through on the scapula coming over and then it gets into the rhomboid teres major and minor coming through and you get this beautiful cavity that he, he does so well. I'll take that out so you can see that a little further and you get those dark lines, dark marks and core shadows right in through, right in through here again. It's almost like a little cavity or starfish. Um, and then does it get any better than this beautiful head? You know, the gorgeous relationship of parts to the sum, the uh, core shadows in through here, and then we get the, the block-like quality of the head as it's tilted. There it is. There's that front plane, and we get the top plane of the box. See it right there? And so we see all of that in its beautiful relationship. Of course, all of this is in shadow, right, because the light source is again coming from the top left, and so we're lit somewhat here, and then of course lit to the side there. There's a reason why that's everybody's favorite drawing. Um, it it, uh, it is, is a stunner. All right, and a few more here. We have another uh, Sybil, I believe, or at least a study for the Sistine Chapel, more of a full figure study of the torso region in through here. I'm going to go a little faster so we can get through a little bit more. But again, the chalk, use of chalk, beautiful contour line. Also, these little core shadows to show these little pockets of where the, the patella and the condyles of the um, tibia and fibia come out where they connect. I, I, I love those quite a bit and these beautiful little dark cast shadows being cast from the bicep and the deltoid onto the chest. Then we open up a little light and then we get a lighter core shadow on the pectoral there as well. Here we have another uh, study uh, for the uh, resurrection and this gives you some idea into the mind of Michelangelo's composing studies after probably more abstract designing, uh, very um, very quick abstract designing, and then we get these beautiful movements up right in through here. He takes us on a journey this way, and then back down, right, and then over, and then we see these images, and out, and then the clouds, or the uh, storm clouds, whatever this is in the background, come back up, and then we come back up to the image of what is most likely Christ in through here. This gives you an idea of his preparatory compositional sketches. We have another beautiful head study. Beautiful rendering of an upturned nose, which will give you this, this very much kind of triangular nose with the uh, philtrum coming in and the lips really turned over. We get this very much this ball-like idea. Very much a ball. Look at this. So we have this idea of the, of the eye in through here as a ball and this triangular idea of the nose. We get this upturned box that's really tilted up this way, right? And over, and then everything comes down like that in design. Here to their three-dimensionality. Then I'd saw you, I, I would, thought I would show you this fantastic study for the uh, Last Judgment, a screaming figure probably damned to hell. A study for the mural of the Last Judgment on the Sistine Chapel, which is on the back wall there. Um, the multi-figured, uh, romantically uh, executed composition of in imaginative figures that were studied from, obviously, life and then put into great usage and imagination on the mural. And I tell my students that, you know, these are the first kind of comic books or the graphic novels. I have a lot of students who who want to do that sort of thing and, and they need to, you know, we all need to make sure that you're looking at the original masters of, of narrative storytelling and one of those of course would be Michelangelo. But the expression, the upturned muscles here, the cheekbones, the pulley muscles really contracting upward to lift up the cheeks and the downward open mouth position, the chin coming down a little bit 
as well, the teeth extended and the intensity of the eyes and contrast and value. I'll see light source coming from the left, so everything in the right. Uh, makes, this, makes it a beautiful, rich, rhythmic flow coming through and out the composition this way. So we get the sense of tempestuous um, energy and emotion that Michelangelo obviously captured beautifully. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed um, the relative 15 minutes with Michelangelo, and it will encourage you, encourage you to look further at his work and ideas in one day. Go get to uh, Rome, the Vatican, and also Florence to see um, his works. You guys take care. Bye-bye.